are following the rules or not during campaign. Besides, 122 election investigation teams are formed across the country to monitor voting environment. Candidates and the nominees can file objections to these committees. Election Commission says candidates cannot write and paste posters on any wall. Besides, election panels should not be beyond 400 square feet in size. They can use loudspeakers between 2 in the afternoon till 8 at night. Election Commission also banned motorcade show, torch procession or rally and illumination. None can deliver provocative speech. Besides, members of parliament or ministers will have to avoid government facilities during campaign. Chief Election Commissioner K. M. Nurul Huda has urged judicial magistrates to perform the duty neutrally in the upcoming general election. He said this while addressing a briefing for the judicial magistrates at the Nirbachan Bhavan in the city today. Election Commissioners Mahbub Talukdar, Muhammad Rafiqul Islam, Kovita Khanam and Brigadier General Vitaq Shahadat Hassan and Election Commission Secretary Hilaluddin Ahmed also spoke at the briefing. K. M. Nurul Huda said the Election Commission wants to hold a credible election as it is accountable to the nation, the constitution, political parties as well as the country's people for holding a fair election. He said more than 600 judicial magistrates will perform their duty from December 29 to January the 1st to ensure suitable atmosphere during the polls. Meanwhile, Chief Election Commissioner K. M. Nurul Huda held a meeting today with the high officials of RAB, Coast Guard and ANSA to discuss the law and order situation. High officials concerned were present at the meeting. They assured the CEC that all necessary measures will be taken to keep the atmosphere smooth and peaceful during the election. Awami League General Secretary Obadul Qadir has urged people to cast ballots for vote for the continuity of country's development and democratic system to sustain. He made the call while leading election campaign at Kompani Ganj and Boshirhat Upasala under Noakali today. Highlighting developments reached under Sheikh Hasina's government, Obadul Qadir said, Mega projects like Bodda Bridge, Metro Rail, electricity and internet facilities reaching to the people and with the Awami League re-elected, modern facilities would be at the doorsteps of rural people. Speaking about BNP's 22 years of misrule, terror and corruption, he said, days are over to get votes flexing muscle and power. He alleged that losing contact with the people, BNP leaders are now engaged in falsehood and conspiracies. The leaders of BNP and Jati Oiko Front have become vengeful at Awami League's success while the BNP is without any leader and their falsehood led to losing public support for them. 14 party spokesman and health and family welfare minister Mama Nassim said this at a public meeting at Kunkunia School Ground under Kazipur Pozla in Sirajganj district today. Local leaders of Awami League and its associate bodies also addressed the meeting. Earlier, Mama Nassim held separate meetings at Purvo Garuda and Chok Fulkocha Primary School's premises and Shonamukhi Idga Maidan under Shadru Pozla. He said Bangladesh has become an example for, across the world for playing significant role in poverty alleviation. Jashod President Hasanul Haq Inu started election campaigning in his Kushtia 2 Bhairamara Mirpur constituency with the boat symbol as the candidate of Grand Alliance in national parliament election. The Jashod President told the journalists at Bhairamara bus stand that the Grand Alliance under Sheikh Hasina must return to power once again for the sake of development, peace and continuity of liberation war trend. Hassan al Inu urged the people to dump militancy, fire terrorists, communals and razakars once again through the parliamentary election. BNP Secretary General Mirza Fakhrul Islam Alamgir has urged election commission and government to ensure level playing field for all to hold the 11th parliamentary election in a free, fair and credible way. 
He made the call while briefing reporters at BNP's Gulshan office in Dhaka today. Mirza Fakhrul Islam Alamgir said media should play an important role in holding fair and credible election. He requested all not to spread rumor and propaganda in social media. BNP Central and City Unit leaders were present at their time. FBCCI, BGMEA and Oparajio Bangla jointly introduced a new movement, hashtag I am Bangladesh, to encourage young voters to execute their rights in the upcoming election. The slogan of the movement is, first vote of the youth for peace and development. The logo of the movement unveiled at a function at Farm Gate in the capital today. BGMEA former president Atikul Islam chaired the function which was also addressed by FBCCI President Shafiul Islam Mohiuddin, BGMEA President Siddiqur Rahman, DCCI President Abul Kashem Khan, cricketer Shakib Al Hassan and actor Ferdos Ahmed. The speakers urged the young voters to cast their votes in favor of the candidates of pro-liberation forces to maintain the trend of development and progress. Now, BTV's regular field report, People's Voice on Politics and Election. Discussions, table talks and conversations are going on at every corner of the country as national election coming nearer. Mass people are discussing about the government's performance development of localities and dreams and possibilities of future Bangladesh. Talking to the BTV, some people at the bank of River Brahmaputra in Maiman Singh district expressed their thoughts over the next general election. A young man said in the past there were no safety and security in the park and other public places but now everybody is secure. Two young girls said they want Bangladesh to develop further at the present pace of activities. A student said he is willing to see qualified and patriotic leaders to win the election who will also work hard for the well-being of the country. A tourist couple said people should select such a leader who will ensure the continuity of the development of the country and it should be led by pro-liberation political parties. Another woman said liberation war is their pride of the nation and none can go against it. A boatman said he wants the country to develop further, more advancement with increased quality of life to live peacefully. At present he is leading a good life, the boatman added. Now international news. Yemen's warring sides are holding face-to-face -face discussions over a planned prisoner swap, one of several confidence-building measures aimed at ending more than three years of war that has ravaged the impoverished country. Since talks began last week, United Nations officials have been shuttling between delegates from President Abdurrahman Mansur Hadi's government and the Houthi rebels. A member of the Yemeni government delegation said to journalists they will now be discussing the technicalities of releasing prisoners and detainees. This is the first face-to-face -face meeting between government and Houthis since the war began. French President Emmanuel Macron is set to meet trade unions and employers organizations in a bid to defuse weeks of unrest in Paris and other cities. Monday's meeting comes ahead of a television address in which he is expected to announce measures in response. France has seen four weekends of violent protests against fuel tax rises, living costs and other issues. About 1,36,000 Yellow West protesters took to the streets on Saturday. More than 1,200 were taken into custody. The European Court of Justice has ruled the UK can cancel Brexit without the permission of the other 27 EU members. The ECJ judges ruled this could be done without altering the terms of Britain's membership. A group of anti-Brexit politicians argued 
the UK should be able to unilaterally halt Brexit, but they were opposed by the government and the EU. The decision comes a day before MPs are due to vote on Theresa May's deal for leaving the EU. MPs are already widely expected to reject the proposals during a vote in the House of Commons plan for Tuesday night. Meanwhile, Prime Minister Theresa May said a rejection of her deal could lead to a general election or possibly no Brexit at all. Saudi Arabia's foreign minister has ruled out extraditing to Turkey the suspects in the murder of journalist Jamal Khashoggi. Adil al Jubair said Saudi Arabia will not extradite its citizens. Just over a week ago, Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan demanded the extradition and on Wednesday a Turkish court issued arrest warrants. Saudi Arabia has charged 11 people with the murder which took place in the Saudi consulate in Istanbul in October. A two-day multinational seminar on UN peacekeeping has begun at Rajendrapur Cantonment in Ghazipur. UN Peacekeeping Program Division of United Nations Headquarters, in cooperation with Bangladesh Institute of Peace Support Operation Training, organized the seminar, which was attended by the representatives from the countries which took part in UN peacekeeping missions. Army Chief General Aziz Ahmed inaugurated the seminar, which was also addressed by Chief of Air Staff, Air Chief Marshal Mashihu Zaman Sarniabad, and UN Representative Senior General Hugh Van Rojen. 55 senior army and civil officials from 18 countries and United Nations, along with about 100 senior army officials from Bangladesh, are taking part in the seminar. Now news on sports. Bangladesh will face Wendy's in the second ODI to confirm the three-match series with one match remaining in hand tomorrow. The match will start at 1 p.m. at Amir Pushere Bangla National Stadium. Bangladesh Television will telecast the match live. Earlier, the Tigers beat the Caribbeans by five wickets in the first ODI. This is a chance for Bangladesh to grab the ODI series for the 18th time. This year, Bangladesh won 12 matches while they played a total of 18 matches. India beat host Australia by 31 runs today in the Adelaide Test, leading the three-match series by 1-0. Chasing the victory target of 323 runs, Australia started their final day's batting with overnight score of 104 for 4. The Aussies were bowled out on 291 runs in the second innings. Jaspreet Bumrah, Ravi Chandran Ashwin and Mohammad Shami took three wickets each for India. India scored 307 runs in the second innings. Australia were all out on 235 runs in reply of India's 250 in the first innings. Chateshir Pujara was a judge man of the match for scoring 194 runs in this test. Bangladesh International Badminton Challenge 2018 will kick off at the Wooden Flow Gymnasium in Dhaka tomorrow. This was informed at a press conference held at Shaheed Tajuddin Ahmed Indoor Stadium in Dhaka today. President of Bangladesh Badminton Federation and Information Secretary Abdul Malik spoke at the press conference. General Secretary of the Federation Amir Hussain Bahar was also present. A total of 151 players from Bangladesh, India, Malaysia, Thailand, Nepal, Sri Lanka, Maldives, Australia, Germany, US, Indonesia, Bahrain, Mauritius and Vietnam will take part in the tournament. And now to end the bulletin, a recap of the top stories. Campaign begins as Election Commission completes allocation of election symbols to parliament election candidates. Chief Election Commissioner urges the judicial magistrates to perform duties neutrally within legal framework. BNP leaders engage in falsehood and conspiracy, losing public support, comments of Adil Kader.
Houthi rebels and Yemen government discuss prisoner exchange to build trust towards ending crisis. And Bangladesh meeting Wendy's in the second ODI at Mirpur tomorrow. India beat Australia by 31 runs in the first test in Adelaide. And that's all from the newsroom for the moment. Thank you for being with us. Our next bulletin is coming up at 11.30 in Bangla. Till then, Khuda Hafiz. Khuda Hafiz. Badminton Challenge 2018 will kick off at the Wooden Floor Gymnasium in Dhaka tomorrow. This was informed at a press conference held at Shaheed Tajuddin Ahmed Indoor Stadium in Dhaka today. President of Bangladesh Badminton Federation and Information Secretary Abdul Malik spoke at the press conference. General Secretary of the Federation Amir Hussain Bahar was also present. A total of 151 players from Bangladesh, India, Malaysia, Thailand, Nepal, Sri Lanka, Maldives, Australia, Germany, US, Indonesia, Bahrain, Mauritius and Vietnam will take part in the tournament. And now to end the bulletin, a recap of the top stories. Campaign begins as Election Commission completes allocation of election symbols to Parliament election candidates. Chief Election Commissioner urges the Judicial Magistrates to perform duties neutrally within legal framework. BNP leaders engage in falsehood and conspiracy, losing public support, comments of Abdul Qadir. Houthi rebels and Yemen government discuss prisoner exchange to build trust towards ending crisis. And Bangladesh meeting Wendy's in the second ODI at Mirpur tomorrow. India beat Australia by 31 runs in the first test in Adelaide. And that's all from the newsroom for the moment. Thank you for being with us. Our next bulletin is coming up at 11.30 in Bangla. Till then, Khuda Hafiz. Khuda Hafiz.